The Chicago White Sox are in for a rough ride in 2024. With key players facing injuries and a struggling pitching rotation, the team's chances are looking bleak. Fans are holding their breath as the season unfolds, but it's shaping up to be a challenging road ahead for the South Siders. Stay tuned for all the latest updates on this roller coaster season. Hello, sports fans and baseball fans. Today, I'm going to talk about my favorite team, the Chicago White Sox. Now, as you well know, the Major League Baseball season for 2024 is about to get underway next week on Thursday. Well, actually, it technically already did. The Padres and the Dodgers played in Korea. But uh, the uh, domestic games will start on the 28th of March. So the White Sox will embark on their 2024 season, which if you are a White Sox fan, if you are not a White Sox fan, if you know anything about baseball, you can probably tell that the White Sox are in for a tough season. Now, according to fan graphs, the White Sox will only win 67 games. Now, I mean, that might be actually a generous projection. Um, we'll go down who they have, but anyway, that's the point of this video, is to talk about the projected probable 26-man roster for the White Sox, which is, in, um, according to Todd Welter, who is a huge Chicago Bears and Chicago White Sox fan, just like me. But I let Todd Welter do the research on this. So uh, we're going to get into what uh, players the White Sox will um, head to Chicago with or head into the season with. Uh, they will open against the Detroit Tigers, and their projected opening day. Well, I'm not going to even get to that yet because we're not we're not uh, we're not talking about the pitchers yet. So let's uh, just start with the position players. First, you have catcher. If you've been watching spring training, if you've seen the White Sox in spring training, it doesn't take a, a genius to figure out that their catching tandem is going to be. Martin Maldonado as the starter, and Max Stassi as his backup. Now, I don't know what the deal with Max Stassi is, because he's neither a really great defensive catcher, nor can he hit. Maldonado can't hit, but he is a very good defensive catcher. Or he has been in recent years, let's hope he at least keeps that up. Fangraphs projects him uh, for a slash line of 184, 258, 348. Again, that might be generous, although really the 184 batting average, I think he can at least manage that, maybe even a little better than that. And by the way, Fangraphs projects Max Stassi to hit 202. But he'll be the backup, so he's not going to play that much anyway. The projected starting infield would be Andrew Vaughn at first base. At second base, you would have um, uh, Nicky Lopez, who came over from the Kansas City Royals. At shortstop, you would have uh, Paul DeYoung, who has been seemingly on every major league team so far. Last year, he was on, I believe, the Cardinals, the Giants, and the Toronto Blue Jays. So, um, and then at third base, you've got, um, our, uh, our, you know, previous and for the last few years, third baseman, Johan Moncada. Now, Moncada is the best one of this group. He, and he has the highest ceiling. He can hit, he can, uh, if, if he's on and he's playing up to his ability, he should be a very good hitter. And he is also a very good third baseman. Uh, Vaughn is a good fielding first baseman, but he isn't really great in the hitting department. I call him kind of, uh, you know, Captain Vanilla. I mean, last year he wasn't, he wasn't, really wasn't that great last year. He hit 25 home runs, but he had like, you know, 500 plate appearances. So that's not all that great. Uh, Lopez and DeYoung, neither one of those guys is great uh, at hitting, but, um, Chris Getz went out and got them because they are good defensively. So uh, the infield 
the infield did need some work. The infield was very porous defensively. Um, and so those guys should shore us up defensively up the middle, but they're not going to hit very well. That's the problem. Uh, the outfield will be, um, what is that going to be? Where are those guys? Oh, that's going to be, uh, Andrew Benintendi and left and, uh, uh, Robert in center, Lewis Robert Jr. in center field. And in right field, a uh, guy I never heard of, Dominic Fletcher. Now, apparently Fletcher came over in a trade with Arizona. He is an older prospect who is going to finally get his shot. And, of course, older prospects who have been knocking around the minors, they've been knocking around the minors for a reason. And when they get their shot, they get their shot usually with a team that's not going to do very well. Um, and uh, Robert, of course, last year he had 38 home runs. No reason to expect he can't do that again, but he'll be basically the best hitter far and away that we have in our lineup. And uh, Andrew Benintendi, is, uh, he's, a, he's a good hitter. He's a good, solid hitter. He's a good, solid all-around player. Um, so, you know, him and Robert, fine. Um, you know, Dominic Fletcher, I don't know. Um, and we will get to somebody who will make the roster who also could contend for the right field spot, um, at least in a platoon situation. You know, who knows? We'll see. The DH is going to be Eloy. Eloy Jimenez, who we've had for several years, has never really lived up to his potential. Um, he uh, had 30 ho 31 home runs in 2019, and then... He has failed to hit more than 20 home runs every year since then. So he isn't really living up to his potential. Uh, we're going to have to see how that plays out. I mean, if he lives up to his potential this year, that'll help. You know, if Robert, if um, uh, Benintendi, if Jimenez do what they're capable of doing, Moncada... If they all do what they're capable of doing, it's possible we'll hit that 67 mark. But, you know, it's not like we're going to hit, like, 89. So, the you know, we're, we're really shooting for that 67. Um, and, then, uh, and then the utility, the, the bench guys, are projected to be Kevin Pilar, an outfielder. Uh, he's hit 231 in the spring. Another guy, not big on the bat, but he is a good defensive outfielder. Then Gavin Sheets. Gavin Sheets is a guy that may contend uh, with uh, with Dominic Fletcher for the right field spot, or at least part time in the right field spot. And then Zach Remillard, one of my personal favorites. He's on one of my Stratomatic teams. I love Zach Remillard. Um, and he, as far as a backup, I mean, he can play. He did play the corner outfield positions last year. And he can play most of the infield. So, I mean, he's perfect. Uh, he can play a lot of positions. He's not very good defensively at any of them, but he uh, he can hit a little bit. And, again, he's a prospect that's been around a little bit, so we'll see. Um, but, you know, I, I like Zach Remillard. I'm not, not upset about that, um, especially as a backup. And then uh, the rotation. Now, the rotation is going to be bad news. There's a lot of bad news in this rotation. First of all, we, we traded Dylan Cease to the Padres. And uh, the starting pitcher, I forget his name, the starting pitcher that we got in there, that, um, you know, the gem of that trade is probably going to start in the minors because I don't see his name here on this list. So he's, he'll probably start in the minors, although. He could be major league ready this year. Um, and then they, uh, uh, the other bigger, you know, they got, uh, I think they got two other prospects and then they got Steven Wilson for the bullpen, but we'll talk about him when we get to the bullpen. So you got Garrett Crochet, Eric Fetty, Michael Soroka, Chris Flexen, and Nick Nastri Nastrini. Nick Nastrini. I don't know anything about Nick Nastrini. I'm going to tell you that right now. I'm going to be up front with you. Chris Flexen, I, I know about, and I wish I didn't. And uh, Michael Soroka. Now, Michael Soroka 
is Michael Soroka, Crochet, and Fetty are wild cards because those guys have the ability to pitch well. If they can pitch well, if they can pitch higher end uh, performance for them, then they'll be at least decent. Um, but uh, yeah, but Chris Flexen, I don't expect much of anything from him. And Nick Nastrini, I don't know anything about him. So, you know, he could go, he could be anywhere from, you know, on the scale, he could be anywhere from Cy Young to crappy. Then you got the bullpen. The bullpen will be, uh, as I said, as I mentioned before, uh, Stephen Wilson, he is a reliever. He was a setup man for San Diego and he came over in the Dylan Cease deal. Then you got Michael Kopech. He's going to the bullpen basically because he's a terrible pitcher and he only has like maybe one or two good pitches. Every time he started, he gets racked. You look at his statistics from last year, he wasn't very good. So that's a perfect place for uh, Kopech is the bullpen. Uh, Jordan Leisure. Again, no idea what we're going to expect from Jordan Leisure. Even if I knew about him, even if I knew he was good in the minor leagues, whereas uh, I assume is where he's coming from, that doesn't mean anything. You know, guys are always, there's a lot of guys who have been great in triple a and then they can't handle it in the big leagues um tanner banks tanner banks has been on the team for you know he's been up and down the last couple of years with the white Sox. uh davy garcia uh i believe he was on the yankees i think he was on the yankees at one point tim hill we'll see i don't know much about tim hill john brebbia he's been around the block a little bit He's a fairly decent relief pitcher. Jake Cousins. Jake Cousins was out uh, most of last year with an injury, but uh, the last time we saw him in the majors, he was on the Brewers. He is a pretty decent relief pitcher. As a matter of fact, really, the strength of this team, if you want to mention what the strength of this team is, if you want to say that there is even such a thing for this team, it would probably be the bullpen. The bullpen may not be too bad. And the starting rotation, we'll see if the top three can, you know, uh, go a little notch above what they usually do. But those last two guys are just not, I mean, who knows? Well, uh, with Chris Flexen, we do know. He's not going to be very good. So that is the projected 26-man roster. Now, you got other players that have been up with the White Sox in the past um, or that made their debuts last year. That we could see, um, you know, Oscar Colas, let's, you know, who knows, maybe he gets up and there's going to be injuries. Every team has injuries. So we'll see, um, who they have in the system that they can bring up, that they can plug in when somebody goes down. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah, it, uh, it, it, I gotta be honest. It doesn't look very good. So 67 wins. I don't know. Um, and, uh, the opening day starting matchup will be Garrett Crochet against, uh, Scooble, I believe is going to pitch for Detroit. He is scheduled to pitch for Detroit. So we'll see how this all plays out. Um, <clears throat> it's not going to play out as a playoff team. That's for sure. Um, but you know, I think if, I think if we were to win in like the seventies somewhere, maybe 74, 73, 74, 75 games. That would be ecstatically great for this team. Uh, 67, you know, I, I think a few things even still have to go right for them, even to hit 67 wins. But uh, let me know what you guys think. Anybody out there, White Sox fan, you might be feeling my pain. If you're a baseball fan, you must know these players, or at least a lot of them, and you could probably tell where we're headed but uh, let me know i'd be interested leave a comment certainly give me a thumbs up that's very easy to do and uh, if you haven't subscribed subscribe to the channel uh it helps me out and i love to see those numbers go up whenever they do even by one so uh otherwise that is going to be it for me sportsman z bob zolke 
signing off.